One of the things, I wasn't going to show this, but I have a lot of loyal readers out there, and these are oiling tricks you can do to the standard small block Chevrolet that makes all the difference in the world. Especially if you're climbing above 55 to 6,000 RPM. Um, it don't matter if you're using hydraulic or mechanical cams. This is a 7 16 metal cut and drill bit, approximately 22 inches long. Now what you're going to do with this is you're going to go on the two end galley plugs, the ones that support the lifters, and you're going to go all the way through like I did this. You see how easy it goes through? I've already drilled. You go all the way through the block till you get to the last inch where the threads are in the back of the block. You know, your oil galley threads. Do not drill this drill past them oil galley threads. You got to get right up to the end. There's an oil passage back there. You got to get to that passage and then maybe a half inch up is the threads. Now, I usually have somebody stand back there with a flashlight and look, uh, I was going to make a permanent mark and measurement on here, but I didn't have the time. This was a fresh bit. But, I, but 7 16 on the sides, you would not believe how bad the, the wave effect is up in this block. When you take this 7 16 bit and drill all the way back to the back right before you get to the threads, it straightens out that oil path. It can make a very big difference on your oiling. Now, we talked about that one, but now here's the real trick to this deal. There's your 7 16 Here's the big one. This is a half inch. It only goes in the very top right here. Now, let me explain what's happening. It ain't even 7 16 so we're going to increase this size of that galley to a half inch. And then we're going all the way, as you can see, to the back, to right before the threads. Now, why am I doing this? Because all you Chevrolet guys out there know that the small block Chevrolet does not use what's known as priority main oiling. It oils from the uh, uh, cam bearings and stuff down, to rods and bearings, which uh, any of the aftermarket blocks have corrected this. So if you're dealing with an older block, the expense of a few drill bits can literally change the oiling system of this motor dramatically, especially up in the higher RPMs. Now the reason that we're going to drill with a half inch only on the top one is because that top one supplies the oil. Now we're going to get into the bottom of the block and I'm going to show you why you do it this way. Alright, we've seen where I drilled through there drill bits in question. Now, remember that we took that half inch and drilled in the very top one. Now, uh, before this was before the line hone. It's already been done. You have to do this before you line hone the block, of course. You'll notice the chamfer, but only on the center three, okay? Only on them do you do this with the big one. This is the 5 sixteenths. Now, you're going to drill straight down, and it goes all the way through the cam bearing hole, and all the way through to the other side of the cam bearing hole. The cam bearing should not be in there while you're doing this, and it drills straight into that top galley. By doing that, you just brought the increased diameter of the one on top, the half inch, and connected it to the centers here, here, and here. The reason you only do it on the centers is because each one of the center caps oil two connecting rods each. The one on the end oils one rod, the one on the rear main oils one rod. It gets the smaller quarter inch and I just drill it to make sure that it goes straight through and it don't go through to the cam bearing by the way. It don't work that way. So we got two drill bits, five sixteenths, quarter inch quarter inch on the ends and then five sixteenths on the center 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 caps okay by doing this here we have made this oiling system as good as it can get now you can tell the difference in the diameters of the holes let me get you as close as i can 
see how uh, there's the quarter and here's the five sixteenths. You can just tell the diameter differences. And only on the center three, it has to go through both sides of the cam bearing hole and anchor off into that top one. And you just really help the oil supply of this motor. Now to make this work, of course, you're going to have to go to a high volume pump. Preferably a three-quarter tube, a five-eighths high volume tube will work if it's one of the Melling Select pumps and a very good oil pan, which uh, we're going to show you the oil pan we used on this. It's probably one of the best pans on the market from Moroso for the money. It was about $260 and, and it is a steel pan, but the features are going to really complement the oiling tricks that we've done with our drill bits. So if you're prepared to spend about a hundred and some odd dollars, maybe a hundred and twenty bucks on these drill bits, you can really help the oiling system of this motor and uh, going with the good crankshaft parts and whatever, you're going to be able to RPM this thing all day long without any issues. Alright, I just wanted to go over that one oiling trick. Now I got to go in here and do grinding some in this area and put the crankshaft in and simulate with pistons and rods being on it to see if I got a notch anything in here on this 305 block where it's being converted to the 375 stroke crankshaft. That'll be the next thing up after I tap the front oil galley hose. Okay. You can see I've got uh, in line here the three front oil galley hose. Of course, this is after that the drill bits have been run through. Let me zoom in a little bit. And as you can see, I've already tapped the other two. Okay. And all you do, this is 3-8. This gets rid of them bullshit freeze plugs, which if you're running a high volume, high pressure pump, they've been known to blow them plugs right out, and then you're in a world of mess. But you go in here with a 3-8 pipe tap, and go in here and tap them and put some threads in it. And just like the galley plugs, you kind of got to go back and forth a little bit until you get them positioned where you want them. It's better to have to do this a time or two, by the way, and check until you're sure you got it where you want it than to go too far because there is an oil pole. Uh, I'm sitting here looking at the one on the top. There is an oil hole that you can't put that plug past it. And we sure don't want to do that. You have to measure. Okay. So then all you do is you get your oil galley plug in your hex set and you go in here and what you're looking for is you want to make that plug up flush. Which I almost got it in the first shot. So I know I just need a, a couple of threads and then I'll have it level. Notice also on the top of the block I've got to go in here. I always grind this down because some timing chains will hit it. Not that mine's going to because I'm using a good Torrington bearing type timing chain with the thrust uh, Torrington bearing in it. But I still blend that, grind that down a little bit just, just for S and G's. Okay. I'm going to go in here and hit this last little bit and pull it in a little bit and then I'll have this part done. then it should lay perfectly flush. I might add, by the way, that it's taking the time to do these things with drill bits, grinding, blending. This is stuff that any of you guys can do at home. It don't cost a lot of money. And like I threaded all the bolt holes in it, chased everything. This is the difference between a high quality motor that you're not going to have problems with and one that will have problems. I've been doing this a long time and I've just seen the difference of when you take the time to do it. And none of the machine shops I've seen are going to take the time to do this stuff unless you're paying them buku dollars to do it. Alright, there we go. It's just a touch, just a touch past being a level surface. We're good right there. So all three of them plugs are tapped and they're ready to go. Now we'll move on to some more grinding on the block. I got, even though I got the galleys mostly done, 
I still got a lot to do in other areas. For instance, uh, I'll go in here on Holder's Boulder, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to grind all the rough edges, the outside of the block. I do a good job cleaning all of it all the way around so there's rough, no rough edges. That's just professionalism, you know, and that way when they're handling the block, they don't cut their hands. Uh, some of that stuff don't help performance, some does. But what it shows is that you have paid serious attention, uh, excuse me, attention to detail on this motor. Alright, um, now we'll get on to the rest of the grinding that's left on the block so we can do crankshaft fitment and four corner mock-up and all the other good things before we send it back to the machine shop.